Let's have a brief speculative talk about you and I. To start, we should note that it is well known that the Kabbalistic metaphors and imagery are also allusions and references to the human experience. Just as there is a great nothing in the supernal spaces, so too is our life predated by a great nothing, a time before our existence. If we look at our life as the whole of our personal experiences, nothing exists before and nothing can be said of the future. Yet we know that life propagates itself by admixtures and commingling. So the question is not where did you come from, as in your body or material form, but from where came your sense of being, your I, so to say. The further question then is, did you will yourself into being? The whole of nature operates in a similar manner, pushing itself one over the other. So who's to say you didn't? The young mind's inclination is one of self-expression, to push back and act against, similar in style to freshly willing oneself to be. So here's the real question. In your passing, would you ever come back? Let's take into consideration just how absurd the universe is. Not in how we perceive it, or how we attempt to understand it, but in that it even exists at all. It's insanity to think this place is existing amidst the infinitudes of possibilities. Subatomic particles and energetic waves could have reacted to each other in a myriad of ways, barring natural order of physics as we know it. But they by their nature's fuse and conglomerate to the point that Eventually, molecular properties exhibit an ability to create material as we know it. Even further, a world, then organic material, and so on, to the present state. This isn't meant to be taken as an argument for intelligent design. Simply to ask, what are the odds? Fortunately for us, though, the odds don't matter. Considering items like Bayes' theorem make it even more apparent. To continue, the fun thing about this place is time, and that it just keeps on going. Therefore, amidst an infinitude of possibilities with finite results, this place will occur without restraint. This being will simply happen. And the catch is, aren't you a minor fractal piece of that possibility? It's as if your potential to be is drifting among finite infinitudes jumping out to show its face at the fitting time and formal place. The point of all this is to say, if you're here today, or if you're out tomorrow, you'll likely be back in the next day, as the fluctuations of possibility ebb and flow, jumping that I in and out of perception, in and out of expression, or in and out of existing. Metaphysically speaking, we could say the universe is a perfect fusion of being and non-being, which is why I prefer to say, I'll see you next time. Who even are you aside from who you choose and will yourself to be? Surely we come in with restraints on that matter, as the manifest world only provides a variety of possibilities and points to consider. But what is your being before your interest? Or before your perceptions? Before anything really snares you? This must be to some extent what the antiquated mind thought was the spirit. A piece of that higher conception couched up against the inconceivable. A finite result thrown up against infinite possibilities. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this brief talk. Thanks for joining me at the Nimitan. I'll see you next time.